Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar on improving automation and efficiency for manufacturers and distributors. My name is Mariah Sandoval and I'm the marketing coordinator at Barcodes. We are excited to understand the challenges supply chains face today and how modern, modern technology can be used to improve the traceability, accuracy, and efficiency. We will also learn the importance that Rainer RFID, a wireless technology that connects items, boxes, and pallets to the internet can drive supply chain efficiencies. Today we are joined by Jeff Hudson from Smart Label Solutions and Todd Farley from Impinge to discuss how key market factors and technologies are impacting the landscape of the connected supply chain. We do have a Q&A Q &A feature available on this webinar, so please feel free to send us any questions and we will address them towards the end as time allows. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff and Todd. Thank you, Mariah, and uh, thanks, Jeff, for joining us as well. This is Todd Farley speaking with Impinge. Um, we're looking forward to a uh, informative next uh, 30 minutes here. Um, before we got going, just want to just quickly just introduce Impinge, SOS, and Barcodes. Uh, we work as a partnership, obviously. Barcodes uh, designs, deploys, works with customers to really deliver the solution. And then Impinge and SOS together put together the solution that Barcodes then takes to the market. And so we'll talk a little bit more about Impinge and SOS, and, and more importantly, we'll spend most of our time talking about what challenges uh, that we can solve or help you solve uh, within your operations. But as we think about the team of Impinge, SOS, and Barcodes, we really partner together to make sure that we help solve some of the most critical challenges that customers have. If we go a little bit deeper on who Impinge is, uh, what Impinge does, uh, we give a digital identity to everyday items. And the way we do that is through uh, ultra high frequency passive RFID. And so at Impinge, we make the semiconductors uh, that go into tags uh, that can go on to items within the supply chain to give them a digital identity. And then we make uh, the connectivity layer that actually reads those uh, those items as they pass through thresholds or they pass through uh, different spots where you want to be able to identify items, you want to be able to locate items, you want to be able to authenticate items, and ultimately you not you want to know where they are and where they're going. So at Impinge, that's really what we do, and I'm going to pass it to Jeff Hudson and let him quickly introduce uh, SOS before we get into the meat of the topic. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Todd. Again, this is Jeff Hudson. I'm the president of SLS. Um, quick overview on our company. We were founded back in 2005 uh, and fully focused on RAIN RFID. And our initial focus, of course, being uh, helping customers comply with what Walmart and the Department of Defense wanted to do uh, back in those days. We're headquartered in Howell, Michigan. That's where our manufacturing facilities are. We also have West Coast operations in Portland, Oregon with testing labs and, and sales offices there as well. Um, and over the last 15 years, the big difference is the technology has, of course, improved uh, greatly. The costs have come down on the technology and, and the change in what our company does now, instead of helping people comply with things that they have to do, we're delivering solutions that our end users want to implement because of the return on investment. So that's really the big difference in, in what we are, we're doing now compared to what we were doing back then. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, we wanted to quickly just introduce ourselves so you knew who uh, Jeff was from, from uh, SLS or Smart Label Solutions and you know who Todd Farley is from Impinge. Um, but really where we wanted to spend the bulk of our time today is really talking about what we're consistently hearing from customers about challenges that they're faced with. Um, and as Jeff mentioned, one of the things that's really exciting for us is, is we really get the chance um, to work together with clients to solve problems that, that drive major and significant change within their operations. And so we really wanted to take some time just to share some of our learnings uh, of working with many, many different customers across supply chain, logistics, and manufacturing about where some of the value uh, that we're seeing them being able to drive. And so if we, if we start with what are some of the commonalities or some of the things that we're consistently hearing, uh, from cu from customers and from in the feedback they're giving, all of you work in environments that are that are rather complex, right? And you realize 
you've got to take goods and you've got to get them from raw material into a supplier, uh, then into manufacturing, and then ultimately putting it out into distribution hubs so you can then get it out to your network of, uh, of, uh, of retailers or shipping directly to customers. And that process of trying to make sure that you have the right items at the right time to the right spot can be really, really challenging. And the thing that we consistently hear from customers is the first thing that they want is they want traceability. They want to understand where that item is, um, in what condition, right, at what spot, at what time, because if I understand where that is, that can have a, a material impact on how I'm going to make my manufacturing schedule, or it can have a, a material impact on my overall sales, because if I don't have the right items in the right spot at the right time, that can significantly impact my ability to get product into the hands of the consumer. So traceability is something that we consistently hear uh, from customers of something they're, they're striving for. And this is, 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 is nothing new to, to many of you who are probably dealing with that. Um, at the same time, traceability is only valuable if it's accurate. And so what we've found is customers uh, of ours uh, spend tremendous amounts of time crafting processes to ensure that they achieve traceability and accuracy. And, and they, they, they create processes where you start double handling or potentially triple handling goods throughout that supply chain in order to deliver on traceability and accuracy because it's that important. The challenge uh, that we see with that is in this uh, ever uh, competitive world where worker wages are rising, uh, where labor is really hard to get, because you've created all these incremental processes and, and you've created multiple touch points to ensure traceability and accuracy, we found that there's a really negative impact to efficiency and productivity. And so as we think about what we're going to talk about and what some of the areas are where we really see folks driving success with, with our joint solutions, it's really on delivering against traceability with accuracy, but, but the major thing is driving efficiency and driving productivity within the supply chain in order to make sure that the right items are at the right place at the right time to ensure that you delight your customers. And so as we think about it, everything we're going to talk about today is really focused on delivering against traceability accuracy, but doing it in a way that really drives efficiency and increases productivity. So again, to build on what Todd was talking about there and, and really focusing in on some of the key spots in that supply chain where we've been able to take RAIN RFID and make a great impact uh, on traceability, accuracy, and efficiency uh, is these three points that we'll build on in the next slides as well. But transition management where, where materials moving, inventory management where you need to either cycle count or understand what, it, what items are where, and then shipment verification. So as things are leaving a, a, a dock door, for instance, uh, how do we verify that the stuff, the right stuff is on the right truck going to the right uh, end point? And so we're going to build on these three because these are really where we have seen not only great improvements to what Todd mentioned, which is, you know, the accuracy, traceability, and efficiency, but also the customers are getting a very valuable return on investment when deploying the technology in these three segments. And we'll build on those individually. And one of the rule of thumb that I want to throw out to everybody on this too, because there's if most, if not all of you are already using barcode based systems. And the real rule of thumb that we like to throw out is again, barcodes work. Um, but if the pain point in the processes that Todd talked about, the pain point is the data accuracy, efficiency, or traceability is missed based on the human intervention. Um, because in a lot of those cases, you're forcing a user to pick up a barcode scanner and pull the trigger and scan something. If that gets forgotten, that's a pain point in those processes. RFID's value is really taking out that human intervention. And that's, again, what helps with the efficiency uh, in the and, and gaining the uh, accuracy and, and traceability. So in transition management, again, you're, you're looking at a picture on your screen now where you're seeing RFID enabled tunnels uh, on a manufacturing line where product is being uh, boxed and, and then sent out to shipping. Um, that's one of those transition spots, but 
you can think of the things that we have listed there. You have crosstalk efficiencies. You know, if you're, if you're bringing products on an inbound and moving that product over to an outbound door, managing that transition from one side to the other um, can be done without human intervention. Work in process. Um, you know, as raw materials are, are moved into a finished good and that finished good needs to be moved into a finished good inventory, that can happen again automatically without human intervention. And then that data being, of course, accurate um, because we're not missing any of those read points. And one of the other things based on the picture that you're looking at is the big, one of the big advantages of this technology over barcode is the box that you're seeing go through that tunnel in the picture. We have the ability to read everything that's inside that box without line of sight, which you would require with barcode. So that, that's one of the big differences um, in these type of transition uh, processes that, that RFID can and really have a big payoff. In inventory management, again, Todd spoke to this. This is one of those uh, processes that every company deals with is how do I accurately manage my inventory and how do I know what, where, and when. Um, I'm gonna speak just today a little bit uh, on the picture again that's on this screen. So there are those type items in, in, in every company where you have a tool crib or you have a consumable item um, storage area where employees just come in and grab what they need to perform their everyday functions. In a lot of cases, it's difficult for companies to manage because so many people are touching this type of inventory. So as you see, just a, a simple picture of a solution here that can manage that automatically for you without user input um, can help to greatly improve the accuracy, traceability, because you can ask, actually uh, rain RFID enable a, a ID badge so I can tell who went into this area what product they grabbed, date and time that they grabbed that and left with it. Um, it also allows me to get a, a very accurate uh, snapshot on what the system knows is still sitting in that area that has not been taken out. Um, and that will help me uh, remotely create a replenishment type of order to replenish based on what moved without me even going in there and cycle counting. So those type of applications are, are readily available, whether that's tool tracking, uh, in a manufacturing environment or the picture that you see here where it's just consumables, your paper towels, soap, things that are used uh, every day within most companies. Um, those type of things can be quickly managed uh, from, from both this portal style or handheld RFID scanners as well. So multiple ways to, to take care of this problem. And then we move to shipment verification. Again, this is one of the hottest market segments uh, for all three of our companies. Uh, shipment verification is one of those um, use cases that has been proven. The technology works very well, very cost effective, and very, very quick return on investment. Um, and there's multiple ways that we can do this. So reconciliation for shipping and receiving. Um, you can easily automate at a dock door based on what you think you're supposed to get there. So for instance, if you're getting an RFID enabled ASN from your vendor and the product shows up at your door, rather than having to open everything and scan each item, you can drive this through a portal at a dock door and automatically receive everything against the ASN, verify the receipt is accurate, um, and then receive that inventory into your, uh, into your inventory. You can also validate shipment accuracy a couple of different ways. So we have use cases where a manufacturer makes a specific widget and they just want to know how many of those widgets went out of a door so that they can get an accurate shipping manifest. So that's very easy to do. You just start a shipment at a dock door like this with RFID enabled widgets and as they go on the truck, you read all of those going on the truck and when you're done, you hit a button and, and get an accurate manifest on everything that was loaded. Um, we can also verify against uh, variable items. So if you're a distribution center and you have all different widgets that need to go onto a truck, for a specific order. You can, ahead of time, validate against data that is supposed to go on that trailer and also give immediate feedback to the fork truck operator that's loading that truck if he tries to load something onto that truck that doesn't belong. Um, so there's some very neat ways to do that that are, again, very cost effective uh, with very, very big uh, return on investment. And then also assets. So there are things that people use in manufacturing process, returnable, call them RTIs, returnable uh, transport items or returnable containers. And those items in most cases, in most organizations we go into before using RFID were very difficult to manually track where those items went and if they got those actual items back from the customers that they sent them to. 
Um, with RFID, we've been able to greatly increase the accuracy of tracking those assets. And because they're each then serialized, we can tell which ones went to which customers and which ones got returned and which ones didn't get returned, which helps uh, organizations get visibility to where the losses are happening of their returnable assets. Um, very, very quick payback. We have lots of use cases that we can point you to um, where we have customers giving us what, what the return on investment was in that type of scenario. And then the last and probably one of the most important things too is this also gives us the ability to integrate into backend systems and automate some of the uh, some of the processes inside your backend systems that you have to do manually today. So for instance, when we talked about automated shipping manifests, we then have the ability when we're, when we're getting very high read rate percentages, very high accuracy of what goes into a trailer, we can automate the process of A, creating that shipping manifest, but B, we can automate the process into the backend system to cr automatically create the invoice to your customer for what shipped out the door without any paperwork having to be transferred from the shipping department to the accounting department. And those processes there are um, extremely impactful on the return on investment. There's some of the soft costs, soft costs that people realize after implementing these processes um, that, that add great value to the technology. We have a few use cases that we want to just throw out there. And these are real world ones that we have that are referenceable sites um, that we can speak about. So I'm going to hit the first one and Todd will hit the next two. But the first one is a Fortune 500 um, wholesaler of goods that we implemented their complete supply chain and all their distribution stuff. And keep in mind, this is a very large organization that was already very good at what they did. So as far as taking product, that was a cross dock scenario. They were receiving goods at the pallet level on their inbound doors, moving those pallets to a staging area, and then cross docking them into a trailer that went out to their retail store. Um, so they've, they've done this for lots of years and they were already very good at it and they were using barcode systems to do it before we deployed RFID. And what we did for this customer is we actually just replaced um, their existing shipping label with a shipping label that looked identical from the human side, but we added the RFID label inside um, their shipping label. And then, and then at the ship point, we installed the dock doors that you saw in the previous picture, portals, and instead of the fork truck driver having to find the barcode on the pallet and grab his handheld scanner and pull the trigger to scan the pallet that he was putting in the dock, all he has to do is do what he is being paid to do, which is move material. So he just picks pallets up, drives them through the portal onto the truck. We would give him an immediate feedback if that pallet did not belong on that truck. We would also give him a positive feedback if it did belong on the truck this retailer was able to improve truck loading efficiency by 25 percent which is a staggering number which allows this retailer then to add retail stores that this distribution center is supporting without adding drivers and docks because they can load trucks much more efficiently so an incredible impact and like that bottom line says in this scenario they were between a four and eight month payback you know, total cost of the the title pass out on the next team. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, and as you've heard Jeff talk through both where the technology is used and then the, the example of the grocery wholesaler and what they're seeing, um, our hope is that what you're seeing is that we're giving a glimpse of where people are leveraging the technology to be able to drive real world returns. And it's really, again, as, as we mentioned earlier, it's really focused on that traceability, that accuracy and then doing things in a more efficient manner. And, and as Jeff mentioned, uh, RFID uh, doesn't completely replace the barcode, but where we've seen a tremendous amount of success is using RFID to augment uh, the barcode to specifically drive more efficiency and higher accuracy at certain specific spots, right? And those were the spots that Jeff mentioned in terms of that inventory, in terms of uh, tracking goods and in terms of uh, shipment verification. So if we think about some of these other examples on the slide, uh, I'll talk about the Fortune 500 automobile manufacturer. Um, much like the example that Jeff spoke about with the grocery wholesaler, um, they had processes in place, a, a very, very well-run organization. They had processes in place. Uh, the challenge was is humans, you and I, are the ones doing those processes. And by nature, there's things that we do um, to cause inaccuracies. Uh, I was talking to this client and they told me, if 
if people would just follow the process I set up, we would never have any issues. Um, and therein lies the challenge is the fact that you have people like myself doing those processes. And as a result, I tend to, at times, lack productivity because I have to do multiple things for checkpoints because I generally make mistakes. And that's what was happening with this automobile manufacturer. They were creating components that are then shipping off to the major uh, suppliers of cars. And what they found is they were shipping the wrong components to the wrong supplier. And you can imagine if I'm supplying parts to both Porsche and Honda, if I ship a Porsche part to Honda, Honda's going to be thrilled. But if I ship a Honda part to Porsche, uh, I've got some challenges because there's a different level of finishing and different level of expectation of what they had. And so what they were finding is that they consistently, even though they had these processes in place, they, they were having issues sending the wrong components to the wrong spot and uh, compiled with that, their business was significantly growing. Um, they were being asked to do more with the same amount of resources they had. And so they were trying to figure out how do I increase productivity while at the same time driving up accuracy. And what they did is they started labeling all of their individual components with an RFID tag. Um, they also had a barcode label on the, uh, on the goods because at other spots in their process, they continued to leverage the barcode. But when things left their dock door, they, they looked at that to say, that is the last place that I want to check to verify that things are going to the right spot. And so much like the, the grocery wholesale example that Jeff referenced, this client was able to put an RFID tag on individual components as those components went through the dock door and up into the quantities of about 30 to 50 um, items going through a dock door, uh, the, the solution that Jeff spoke about was able to read those items and then integrate into the back end software system that said these 50 items went through this door and the system vera said, great, thank you for sending me that and verified to ensure that those were the right 50 items that were supposed to go through the door. And in doing that, they've significantly increased their accuracy to, to where it's 99.99%. Uh, and at the same time, because they now have eliminated the need to do multiple checks um, to, to try to increase that accuracy, they've seen a tremendous improvement in their overall productivity. And their productivity has increased by 15%. And when you start thinking about, well, what does that mean to increase productivity at 15%, you can start thinking about how many more uh, items that I can load in a trailer with the current staff that I have uh, in a given day. So when they're faced with, I need to do more with less, that, that increased efficiency or productivity at that specific dock door was tremendous. And so for them, it was both a accuracy benefit as well as an efficiency benefit. And if, and if we think about this Fortune 500 industrial manufacturer, very, very similar story. Um, and that's the thing we tend to find is where people are really generating a lot of success with the technology is really looking at very specific areas where they need to track things, they need to do it accurately, but they have inefficiencies in their processes. And that's where we've seen these customers really focus in on the dock door and on transition points, whether that's on a conveyor in, in that first picture that, that Jeff showed, or whether it's that specifically a dock door, that's where we consistently see folks leveraging the technology to drive a tremendous amount of value. And I think the key thing here is in all three of these cases, uh, the technology was implemented very, very quickly. It's highly scalable. And then the customer was able to get return on investment very, very quickly. And the way they were able to do that is it's a proven technology that integrates very seamlessly into existing application infrastructure, whether that's a WMS, a warehouse management system, or an ERP. Uh, the system uh, connects very elegantly into those. And, and by doing that, it, it, it takes the time to value significantly down. And so you're able to drive great savings in a very, very quick time period. So if we, if we just kind of wrap up, our hope is that we just planted some seeds. We realized uh, we, we don't have infinite time to cover everything, but what we want to do is just plant some seeds 
uh, to really just uh, impart upon you some of the things we're seeing in the industry in terms of where customers are getting value out of the technology. And so if we think about it, our encouragement to you is look at your own processes. And, and as you think about areas within your operations, are there areas where you want to drive more efficiency while increasing your accuracy and your traceability? Um, and, and know that you have partners with barcodes, SLS, and Impinge who have a solution that can help you solve some of those challenges. And, and when we think about it, right, as, as we've tried to portray, highly scalable solution that's not expensive to get going, right? And it, and it integrates into existing environments very, very quick. Deployments are quick and repeatable. Um, in the example that Jeff mentioned, uh, they're installing 50 dock doors a day. And when we say installing, that's installing and integrating into backend systems. So it's a highly scalable, it's repeatable, very quick return on investment. And then the other benefit that we're seeing, in addition to the real world savings that folks are doing in terms of accuracy improvements and more importantly, the efficiency improvements, what we're also seeing is that because you're able to collect lots and lots of data in an automated fashion, people are now being able to use that data to model and to say, uh, when I want to do a Kaizen event, I no longer have to worry about or think about the opinions and let the opinions drive where we go. But now we can leverage opinions, but also have data in a really rich data source that's been collected in an automated fashion over time to model, to say, if we made this change, what would that do to our overall um, environment? And so when we think about it, um, it's really taking the technology, using it in areas that can drive value, and doing that very, very quickly. So our hope is we planted some seeds. Um, and with that, Mariah, I'm going to hand it back to you and appreciate your time and attention today. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff and Todd. Um, I did see some questions come in. So my first question I have here is, how easy are these solutions to integrate it into our existing WMS application? How much does it, how much customization has to happen to the business applications? Todd, I'll take that one. So um, again, that's a great question. Um, we deal with this as all of you can imagine on every uh, solution that gets um, deployed. In most cases, we do have to get that data back into an existing backend system. The nice thing is the technology has evolved to the point where if you if you take into account the picture that we had of the dock doors, those are actually installed as a true IoT type device. So it's a PoE drop to that. That PoE drop then, of course, is on the network, and we can do a couple of different things. One is simply send an MQTT message of the event to a broker that then can be consumed by multiple applications at the same time. Uh, or we can directly do API calls and actually uh, push the data right into a backend system. And what we're finding is another thing that's really evolved over the last 15 years that I spoke to at the beginning is um, backend software applications are now, in most cases, uh, supporting RFID as an input. So whether it's a 24 character number that we're just popping in, or in some cases, like the, the major wholesaler that I spoke about, we actually just mimicked the barcode scan that was already going on. So from the backend system, we were pushing the data to that backend system exactly like the barcode scanner was. So really there was no difference and in, in no software integration piece involved in converting that uh, process over to RFID. Awesome, thanks Jeff. Okay, I just got another question in. It says, when we talk about RFID based monitoring systems, which kind of IoT server set can we use, we can use, which can integrate which MQTT or with RFID data reading? I think that that question kind of bolted out. So MQTT is, is being widely used now. So again, the devices we showed you there support that. Impinge is supporting that even with uh, uh, new, uh, new product that's being released where you can just directly from the device send MQTT messages in. Um, and then I, whoever asked that question, if you're familiar with MQTT, um, once you get that to a broker, you can customize any subscriber that's listening to that topic, multiple subscribers on the same topic to put that data in multiple places at the same time. So very scalable, very efficient, very low bandwidth uh, use on your existing network as well. Okay, thank you, Jeff. 
Another question we have is, are you suggesting that RFID technology completely replaces the barcode in the supply chain? Yeah, so maybe I'll take, this is Todd, I'll take the first shot at that and then Jeff, feel free to add on to it. I think uh, it, it, we're hopefully, what we were trying to portray is that the simple answer to that question is no. Um, we, we view the barcode and RFID as coexisting. Um, and, and it's really looking at where does each take technology make the most sense in order to deliver on traceability, accuracy, and, and efficiency. And so we, we view the two technologies as, as complementary or as complementing each other. And where we really see RFID being used is where you want to automate processes that today you're trying to gain traceability and accuracy, but you're doing it in a very human, uh, high human touch way. And in, and in those areas, you can start automating those processes. Um, or in spots where on that conveyor picture that Jeff showed, uh, where I have a box of goods going through, uh, the barcode, I could, I could never look and scan every individual item in there without a human opening up that box and scanning. So I can now get tremendous amount of efficiencies because without line of sight, I can read hundreds of items as they pass through. So we, we really see the two technologies working in combination with each other and RFID really being used to add efficiencies, driving increased productivity while delivering traceability and accuracy. And we, we see the same thing with the barcode, but the barcode just requires a one-to-one -one and it requires, uh, in most instances, not all, but in most instances, some sort of human intervention. And so we, we really view them as complementary and really focused on different spots in a value stream map in an operation. Awesome, thanks Todd. Um, and we have one more time for one more question. How scalable is this solution? How many dock doors can you install in a day? Uh, I'll take that one, Todd. So yeah, it, in looking at the picture that we showed you there of, of the dock door type solution, I mean, we've installed, like Todd said, 50 doors a day is not unheard of um, to give you a, a full scaled project. You know, a project that we just did for an end user that had 17 facilities across North America with a total of about 1700 dock doors. Um, a lot of the time there was spent making sure that each facility was ready and that the ethernet drops were ready, but those were all fully deployed in about eight months. Um, so a complete solution done like that in eight months of 1700 dock doors. So very, very scalable um, and we can deploy them very quickly on each site. Awesome, thank you, Jeff. We are out of time. Again, I wanna thank both Jeff and Todd. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at mvall at barcodesinc.com or 312-765-8860. Thank you.